Hazreti Muhammed kadın düşkünü olduğu için mi çok evlilik yaptı? Does the fact that Muhammed married multiple women make him a womanizer? My name is John Tolan. I'm a professor of history at the University of Nantes in France. And uh, I've been working on this kind of question, not from the point of view of Muslim sources, but looking at what European Christians said and thought about uh, Islam uh, and its prophet. And in particular, I'm interested in, in the Middle Ages, uh, where a lot of European Christian authors were were hostile to Islam, which they saw as a rival religion and as a false religion. And so a lot of their polemics against Islam uh, focused on the figure of the prophet. And this is one, you, you asked the question of Muhammad as a womanizer. This is one of the uh, crit uh, critiques that was often made against the prophet. The fact of his polygamy uh, was of course uh, very foreign to Christian Europeans uh, who uh, practice monogamy, and indeed many of the authors uh, who wrote in Latin, the elites were clerics who took a vow of celibacy so they couldn't be married at all. So to them, uh, the idea of pol Muslim polygamy uh, was anathema. The idea that, uh, that Muslims uh, hope for sexual pleasure, among other pleasures in heaven, was also seen is very shocking. So this became uh, a common trope in a uh, common theme in Christian polemics against Islam written in Europe starting from the Middle Ages uh, forward. And this is still seen in, in uh, anti-Islamic polemics today on the far right uh, in Europe. Uh, you have a number of, uh, of people who talk about Muhammad as a, as a womanizer, talk about his uh, sexual life and his marriages uh, in a way that suggests that that uh, denies him the status of prophet. Because of course, if you look at the Christian idea of, uh, of holiness, there's an idea, there's a valorization of celibacy uh, and uh, the, the priesthood is celibate. So uh, the idea of uh, a prophet having a sexually active life and particularly having uh, m multiple wives was seen as uh, as proof that he couldn't be holy. Uh, when in fact, when you look in the context and you uh, other uh, authors who had a, other European authors who had a more uh, positive view of Islam compared this, the system of polygamy uh, in the Arab lands to the system that we find in the in the Hebrew Bible, where also many of the Jewish patriarchs had uh, multiple wives. So this was something uh, that was common to, to the period and to the region, uh, but which of course would then shock European authors. So at any rate, this is something that became, uh, that was criticized by uh, a number of Christian authors uh, who uh, looked at Muslim traditions on uh, the prophet's marriages, on the prophet's uh, sexual activity, on uh, Muslim polygamy as proof that Islam was uh, foreign to uh, Christian values. And the uh, ironic thing is that when Christian missionaries then, uh, during the colonial period, uh, went into uh, Muslim lands, they... Uh, tried to teach that no marriage was not supposed to be uh, polygamous, even though uh, in many Arab countries in the 19th century, there was very little uh, polygamy. Uh, what happens more often was what's called serial monogamy, which is to say uh, there's divorce, there's marriage and then divorce and then remarriage. And many of these, particularly the Catholic missionaries, uh, who were of course opposed to divorce said, no, no, you can't divorce and remarry, uh, you have to stay with the same uh, spouse uh, for life. And uh, this uh, this was made into an image of uh, the Orientalist European image of Islam was of a religion that was debauched and, and the Muslims were involved in sexual pleasure and not interested in spiritual values. And the funny thing is that this uh, 
situation then is turned around in in uh, 20th and 21st centuries. It's now often uh, uh, Muslim Arabs who look at the West as debauched and sexually permissive, because now, of course, since the 20th century, divorce is very common in Europe. Uh, and also uh, living together uh, without uh, outside of marriage. So now uh, what used to be a stereotype of Westerners looking at Muslims as being sexually debauched and not being faithful in marriage, now the same uh, stereotype is turned back the other way. Uh, so it just shows to say that the same themes come up, but they can be used in different ways uh, and in different directions. So again, these uh, when one looks at the, the life of the Prophet Muhammad, one has to look at his... Uh, what's interesting is that uh, in beginning, when he was in Mecca, uh, he was monogamous. He was married to Khadija, uh, who uh, was his only wife. And uh, the, the marriage of, with Khadija uh, is very interesting. Again, it's based mostly, uh, there's no mention of her name in the Quran, but uh, there are plenty of hadith uh, that talk about Khadija. Uh, she was often presented as being older than Muhammad. Many sources say that she was 40 when they were married and Muhammad was 25. She was a widow and a successful businesswoman. So she uh, is often presented today by Muslim feminists as a model uh, of Muslim women to show that Muslim women can be educated, they can work. Uh, and then, of course, this goes against the, the practices of, of, of the Taliban and others who would try to deny a woman the right to work and to have an education. When Muhammad himself married a woman who, uh, who was working, was older than him, and apparently, according to tradition, it was she who proposed uh, marriage. So uh, it's an interesting dynamics of this marriage. And, and uh, Khadija is, of course, often presented as the first Muslim, the first who believed in Muhammad. And when Muhammad had doubts himself about whether his prophetic mission really came from God, she reassured him uh, and convinced him that this was a real prophetic mission. So it's a very interesting dynamic in this marriage. And then what happens, of course, is she dies. Uh, Muhammad then... Uh, goes to uh, goes to Medina uh, in the Hijra, and there he becomes not only a spiritual leader as he was in Mecca, but also a political and military leader. And it's in that context that he uh, has multiple marriages. Uh, and that's in context like many uh, Arab leaders and also uh, the patriarchs in the in the Hebrew Bible, uh, that he forges alliances through these many marriages. And uh, so his, uh, his polygamy is to be understood in a very specific historical circumstance. So that's what I would say to those who, who uh, would say that Muhammad was a womanizer. 